Hi, welcome back to part three. So we're going to talk a little bit right now about something we call a differential equation. Now we've seen them before. You might recall a differential equation is basically any equation that has a derivative in it. It's an equation with a derivative. So in order to solve them, what we're asked to find is to find the original function, f of x. Now we talked about this in part one. You might remember when we said how do we solve a differential. Notice we're going to write this as dy dx and we're going to solve for y. So that's what we're going to do here. So we are going to set this up. We want to find f of x. So in order to do this, I am going to integrate this. So we will say f of x is the antiderivative of our derivative function, 6x squared. Now don't forget the dx. Now if you're curious about where the dx came from, it came from right here when we solved it differentially. This is really dy dx and we cross multiplied there. When we solve for our function, we will get f of x equals, and this becomes 3, whoops, if I do this, this becomes 6x cubed over 3, or 2x cubed plus c1. Now, remember that c1, this is, says that this is a not a unique function. We call this, an, we call this if you might remember, an indefinite integral. So now what we're going to do is we are going to find c1. To find the constant, you need an initial condition. And that's what they tell us here. They tell us at x equals 1, the y value is at negative 3. They're telling me the value of my function at 1 is negative 3. Well, here's my function. And I can just plug that in. Well, my y value is negative 3 equals 2 times 1 cubed plus c1. So c1, if you saw it, would be negative 5. Therefore, our function now becomes 2x cubed plus a negative 5, or 2x cubed, of course, minus 5. And there is our original function. Now, remember, we said that this was not unique, right? This is not unique. But by giving an initial condition, this is now unique. And you can see a question like that coming up. So let's try another one, but this time let's get a little tricky -licious with it. Oh no, this time we're told the value of the second, deri the second derivative is cosine. And that, the and that the first derivative has a value at 3, and the second derivative at 0 has a value of negative 2. So that should, be the f that should just be the function right there. Just get rid of that right there. So if I want to, we want to find the original function, f of x. Well, if I want to find the original function from the second derivative, we just can't make a big leap like this. We have to make a baby leap. So the first thing we're going to find is the first derivative. So to find my first derivative from my second derivative, we are again, we're going to integrate our cosine of x. Don't forget your dx. Now they're not going to tell you to put that there, but you need to remember to. So my first derivative, the antiderivative cosine. Now remember, what function's derivative is cosine? Is sine. So the antiderivative of cosine is sine of x plus c1. Now remember, we have to now find c1. To do that, I'm going to look at a condition. Ah, they tell me the slope at 0 is 3. So they tell me the slope at 0 is 3. So I can plug that in. 3 equals sine 0 plus c1. So therefore, c1 is equal to, and I can just plug that in, right? Because remember, f prime of 0 is 3. Sine of 0 is just, so c1 is 3 because sine of 0 is 0. And so we have our derivative being sine of x plus 3. Now we're not done because now we want to find f of x. So to get f of x, 
we're going to integrate our derivative. Sine of x plus 3. Again, don't forget the dx. They're not going to tell you to put it there. You have to remember. So when we integrate this one, the antiderivative of sine, remember, cosine's derivative is negative sine. So going backwards, the antiderivative of sine is going to be negative cosine of x plus 3x. Now, remember how here we kept putting plus c1s? Well, this c1 stands for this is a unique constant. Well, I am going to have another constant. These aren't the same ones. So I'm not going to put a plus c1 here because this is a different constant. I'm going to put plus c2. c2 says this is a different constant. So now we have to find c2. And they tell us the value at 0 is negative 2. And if I plug it in, we get negative 2 equals negative the cosine of 0 plus 3 times 0 is 0 plus c2. And the cosine of 0 is 1, so we get negative 2 minus equals negative 1 plus c2, so c2 equals negative 1. And now I'm not done yet, I gotta write out my answer. f of x equals negative cosine of x plus 3x minus 1. And there is our function. Alright, well, we're gonna talk about this problem in another video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I will see you guys later. Alright, bye bye.